babysitting. Henry said about babysitting. She used to, we lived in Chapita Park for a little bit. She used to come up and babysit. I can remember she said she got stopped by the state patrol coming up the Ute Pass. And I said, speeding? I couldn't believe that. <laughs> she said, no. She said, you had your bright lights on all the time. And she said, well, didn't you dim them? She said, I don't even know where the dimmer is. Because <laughs> she did nothing but drive it during the daytime. And you could see her going down the street with her hands up here and straight ahead, boy. And when I told her that we were going to have to maybe take the car away from her because of her age and seeing ability and everything, she didn't say anything, but I knew, I, uh oh, it was pretty bad. But to get her to sign the title for that car was the hardest thing on earth. It, uh, it took me almost two weeks to finally get her name on the title so I could transfer the title to my name. Um, there was, I, when she was mayor or on the city council, I was going up to Steamboat Springs when I met my wife up there. I came down by the Soda Springs Park and I looked both ways and there was no cars coming, so I said, okay. I went through the stop sign. I kept on going up past, there was a, here comes a red light. And I said, uh-oh, what did I do now? I said, I can't, I'm not going that fast. And so one of the policemen, I think it was Clint Hall, and he said something about, you're gonna get a ticket. And I said, why? He said, speeding. And I said, well, can't we talk, talk the mayor up and talk about this a little bit? And he said, no. She said, I've got to give you the ticket because if I don't give you a ticket, the people in Manitou will say, you're sharing favoritism. So I said, okay. So that was one of the few tickets I've ever received when I was driving and so forth. Her favorite color was green. Uh, she liked to have, she liked to play bridge. And every time she went to her bridge party, she always came home with first prize or a nice prize of some type. So when Marlene and I got married, uh, she had her trousseau already going because Grandma used to keep everything in one big closet. And so she said, there it is right there. And then you're talking about my wife a little bit. When I first brought her home to introduce her to my mother, and I noticed the next morning, I got up early, and I was downstairs, and she came over to me. She said, what nationality is she? And I said, why? <laughs> and she said, well, she looks like a little Spanish or an Indian girl because she was so dark. She was always in the sun all the time. So her skin turns real dark. And so I said, no. I said, she's a regular girl. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, then, then they fell in love with each other. And they had a good time. At one of the big dinners that Jane talked about when they got together up at the house, I don't know how many people were around that big table, but well, everybody brought something. And so Marlene brought some pea pots. And so they were warming up everything, and she went over to Marlene later, and she said, Marlene, she said, didn't you have time to shell the peas? <laughs> because she really didn't know what peapots were and so forth like that. <laughs> uh, the Kiwanis Club, she baked biscuits at the Kiwanis Club for I don't know how many years. I was trying to figure back and so forth. I figured up that she was over 30 years baking biscuits at the Kiwanis Club. And I think the Kiwanis people at the, that time, members really liked it. And they, had a, they enjoyed it. Uh, I was up there one time when uh, when I was younger when they used to have dinners. And remember the old ice boxes with the ice picks and so forth? You chuck up and you take a piece of ice and you swallow it and you know and you get it going. Well, I had a piece and I swallowed it and I started choking. And so Eula Burcham was standing beside. She picked me up by my heels and shook me around. And I said, I, I never touched a piece of ice again. So <laughs> I think that uh, that's all I've got. I don't know if there's anything else, but is there anybody in the crowd that would like to say anything about Mabel? She, she was strong. I disagreed with her a lot. I told her she used to go down to the voting deal, and it was all Republican. She just put a check behind it. And finally, she started realizing that there were other people alive and did a good job. And uh, so... 
she did vote for a few. And so I know when she was in the nursing home, she said, finally, she said, Jack, I did vote for a Democrat. And so I said, well, my sister-in-law would like that because Audrey is a strong Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. But is there anybody who'd like to say anything about uh, anything else about Mabel and so forth? I want to hear the story about her sitting up in the cemetery all night. The what? When she sat up in the cemetery all night. Oh, that's when they used to go up there. Everybody used to go up and raid the cemetery once in a while. So, were, so she'd just go up there and she said she was going to sit there and catch him one way or the other. <laughs> so she just sat there all, all night long and tried to see what she could do and everything. So, and uh, we used to go up there and play games, on, on especially on Halloween. And uh, I got in trouble one time, I, not very often, but I got in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Down at the Manitou Spa, when it was very active, there was about four or five of us, George Skivington, Bob Graham, or Dale Bjorklin, a whole bunch of us were running through the Manitou Spa, running in one door and running out the other. Well, the manager of the place didn't like it, so he started chasing us. He come flying around the corner, and I was outside the door. And when he came out, he recognized me, and he was going to start to, uh, <clears throat> gosh, to beat one of the kids. And I've still got the blackjack I took away from him. That was what he was going to beat the kid with because he said that he was doing the law and everything. So what he did, he went back in and called Mother up. And Mother came down, and I got a chewing out from the word go from we started. Then I handed the blackjack to Mother, and I said, well, this is what he was going to hit us with. Boy, she turned around and went right back into that Manitou spa, and she chewed him out. And I said, good, good, good. <laughs> so she stood up. But she would do anything for younger generations, you know. She was out. She knew that the taxes would go up on a few things, like the swimming pool and the different places. But she wanted them for her grandchildren and on down the line. So she was there all the time there. And when I went to state, I was lucky and went to state. And we won the state championship in basketball. I looked around, and there was mother in the crowd. Who else raised their hand over there?